Matthews, co-founder of Macroverse. Um, so impromptu, uh, I'm going to do a little stream here. Um, you know, I had such fun doing the Moonbird piece I did and also the Nuclear Nerds piece that I did a couple weeks ago. Uh, I've gotten lost in the black hole of moving over the past uh, week and a half or so, but I'm starting to get back into all the other stuff that we've been up to at Macroverse, which is awesome. Uh, there's actually some pretty cool stuff we've got to announce over the next few weeks, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, you can't see my new office set up here yet, but uh, if you could, you would see that I'm surrounded by boxes on the other side of the room here. And I've said this to a couple of people, but I think it's just a, a fun thing to share is kicking off this stream. When we uh, were getting ready to move about a week ago, um, I had this fantasy that, you know, we were moving on Monday, last Monday, so actually a week ago. I thought, oh, I'll be kind of back up and running Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. And I've come to realize that was a literal kind of break from reality that I probably should have, seek some professional help for because <laughs> we're just starting to kind of feel like we're catching up on some stuff. But uh, things are good. And um, I did manage to squeeze in a little bit of uh, some of the stuff that I've been wanting to do on the drawing side of things. And a lot of it is about uh, giving back to the community, engaging with other communities. Uh, many of you know that Macroverse is building the next phase of the Cheetos project. Uh, Bushidas, which is uh, originally created by Jeremy Booth and is now a Macroverse project. Um, amazing collection of characters, this kind of sci-fi samurai theme. And so we've been inviting people to quote unquote stake characters in the Macroverse Discord, which really means putting characters that you might want to have a story written about, or in this case, might want to have a, a, a piece of art you know, generated from something that we can collaborate with and then give back to those people through various ways uh, as part of this ecosystem that we're building. And so I've been wanting to draw a Bushido for a while and kind of try my hand at it. We've got an amazing artist uh, working on the comic series and you've seen some of those sneak peeks on the Bushido's um, Twitter or probably on the Macroverse Twitter or certainly in our Discord. Um, but it's been appealing to me to try to draw these characters. And one of the things that that's so cool about it, and I've, I've got the one that I'm working on right here, which is one of the, the ones that was uh, posted in the Discord. One of the things that's so cool about these characters is the art that Jeremy Booth created. This very graphic, you know, very flat um, style, which I love. Like it's, you know, very much about the shape uh, language and just the, the kind of interpretation of these forms that create these characters. Um, you know, it's kind of vector style, which he's so masterful at. Um, so I love this. And then it's interesting when you start to think about how to interpret these as uh, more, you know, dimensional high res characters. It's almost the same challenge that you have with something like a Moonbird going from pixel art to high resolution art in that you've got to find a different way of expressing that language to bring it into a different style. So I thought, you know, I'd try my hand at that. You can see a little peek at one of the ones from the comic series and kind of the, uh, the way that Nicholas, our comic artist, has interpreted Bushida's over here, uh, peeking out. Um, but I wanted to kind of do my own take on, you know, kind of the head and shoulders of this guy. So I pulled this up here. Let me uh, pop over to um, Clip Studio. I did go ahead and do a little bit of work on this already, so you won't see the full process, but I'll share a little bit of it as I go a little further into this. So, you know, starting with the, the reference of the character, um, I went ahead with this uh, kind of green background. So, you know, one of the things I think is fun as I do this version of it um, is, you know, to try to bring a lot of the original character, character uh, of the art of this character into the process. Um, and so, you know, I'm in doing so, I'm still trying to capture kind of the vibe of the original art, even though I'm kind of putting it through the lens or, you know, through my own style. Um, so, you know, this was the original sketch. And then, you know, starting to refine that, there's a, a Daito um, starting to the, refine that further. And then, you know, we end up with something like this. And so when I take away the original sketch, you, know, you get more of the, the vibe of what this actual uh, character 
um, is going to look like. Um, so uh, here we go. The next phase for me is to put down some ink lines, um, ink quote unquote, since this is a digital uh, process. Um, but what I'm going to do is take, actually going to put all these in a folder. Uh, so let me do that so that then I can control all these layers uh, opacity at once. So we'll call this pencils. Bring down the opacity and then make a new folder because there will be a few different layers in here for inks. And there we'll need a new layer. And then I'll go over here and find the brush or ink that I want to use. So let's say, um, you know, I, ha I, I mentioned this when I was doing Nuclear Nerd. It's been a while since I've done a whole lot in Clip Studio, but it is one of my favorite drawing programs. I used to use it all the time before I got into Procreate on my iPad. But right now I'm on the Cintiq in um, Clip Studio and kind of finding my way back into Clip Studio because I do really like like the the quality of the brush work and some of the things that um, as much as I love Procreate, there are some things that are just phenomenal about Clip Studio uh, as well. So, you know, and when I talk about kind of interpreting Jeremy's work through my own style, one of, the, one of those things is, you know, this feels like something that should be relatively precise. So like while the nuclear nerd could be a little grainier, let's say, uh, you know, kind of feels more like that style of, you know, kind of being a little looser, a little more uh, apocalyptic, um, you know, because Jeremy's work is so clean and precise, like I want to try to capture a little bit of that in this as well. So when I'm looking for the, the brush that I want to use uh, to ink with, I want it to be, you know, not so much kind of something like this, which might be like a rough texture, um, you know, not something that's like a, more of a dry brush feeling or charcoal, but, you know, something that's a really clean uh, ink line. So, again, I haven't decided what that is yet. So I'm just going to, you know, just experimenting a little bit. I'm also looking for something that can kind of do good thin to thick lines. Um, and, of course, I could adjust settings to get some of that as well, but... You know, I'm just looking for one that basically will work out of the uh, just off the shelf or um, out of the drawer, let's say. Uh, and again, since it's been a while, like I don't have a go to like I used to uh, with what I want to use. So I'm just kind of experimenting here. Uh, consistent Carl sounds good, but uh, actually, I think I remember this guy. Uh, kind of like that. Maybe I'll go with this. Uh, one of the nice things about these programs also is you can use what's called stabilization, which helps your lines be even more, um, kind of gives a little extra, I don't know, what's the word? It kind of smooths out the lines a little bit. And that's something that's available in both Procreate and, um, uh, and Clip Studio. Um, the only thing, the only reason I'm continuing to look is I don't love these kind of oblong line, these pens. They kind of get like a, um, you know, what's the term I'm looking for? It's almost like a, a ribbon kind of effect to them. And I want something that's just a regular thick to thin line, but again, not gritty. So still searching, still searching for the right tool here. Um, trying to find some that I know I used to use. And again, it's been really a few years since I was heavily, you know, in this app kind of almost daily, uh, back in my former life doing a lot more illustration and character design. Um, let's see. Yeah, these are all mostly kind of gritty, uh, grittier lines. So I'm just going to have to go with something here. Um, I want the letter linear Larry. How does linear Larry feel? This will give that one a go. I'm going to bring the brush size down a little bit. All right. So let me bring this guy back on screen for reference. Going to bring, oh, not that, bring the opacity way down. Um, and I'm going to start, I, I tend to start mostly with the things that are on top. So 
going to start with the helmet. I'm going to keep things separated that I know I might want to do some color tweaking on. Um, so I'm actually going to just start with this kind of flame effect up here. And I'm not afraid to let some of these lines get a little thicker uh, because I'm going to end up, you know, you know I'm going to want this to work at a small size, um, which is an interesting thing about like creating PFP projects in general is that the ones that seem to actually work best as PFPs um, are the ones that find the right balance between how heavy the line work is so it will actually show up uh, when it's small uh, and see this actually yeah you know what sorry guys if you're watching this live this is just something that happens i don't love that <laughs> so i'm gonna go with something else still so still still looking for my brush here um hmm lando cow brushian nope not you. Yeah, this is this makes for exciting viewing, I'm sure. Um, let's see. Friend and Inker. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this one again. I'm gonna really knock up the stabilization here. Bring the brush size down. So even though I was just saying about the thick and thin, I, I want to be a little more. Uh, don't want to be quite so bold in all those lines. So the color is also going to do a lot here. Yeah, okay, this is more of what I'm looking for. And so this area in particular, I think I'm going to treat this rather than a actual like, you know, crest or piece of metal on here. I don't want that to be quite as, this to be a little less uh, curved there. I don't like that line. So nice thing about working digitally is you have as many goes at it as you want until you get the line that you're happy with. And that's still not it. Let's see. Okay, better. Um, so yeah, you get to, you know, kind of use the tool to be as insane and anal retentive as you want to be. So getting that in there a little bit more like that. But anyway, I think I'm gonna actually make this kind of an actual flame instead of a piece of the helmet. Um, that's kind of how I'm feeling would be kind of cool as if this guy has this like mystical flame Part of his headdress that's you know not just a piece of metal but it's actually part of the effect again i'm not liking that how curved that is i want it to be more in line with it kind of being across here um, all right yeah this is a little rougher than i want it to be but i'm not going to be too crazy about it at the end of the day it will all come together um, so because I think this is actually going to be a flame, like I'm going to give it some little flamey bits coming off and uh, have this have this extra little bits of flame that are sparking off of this guy. Um, something like that. All right, so I'm going to keep that on a separate layer because I'm going to do some color and effects with that. Um, because that's going to be separate as well, I'm going to turn the opacity down on that and then go underneath it with uh, some of the helmet uh, details. So I think next thing we're going to do is this part of the helmet. You guys might be hearing some... Uh, kid action in the background which is fine <laughs> all right i'm gonna get in here to try to continue this nope 
Not right now, sweetie. Not right now, Maximus. No, you're not, Max. Stop. <laughs> there you go. Not a, not going to have an appearance from my seven-year-old right now, as much as I would like him to be here. All right. That, again, not working. So the other thing I sometimes do is uh, rotate the canvas a little bit so it gives you a different angle on the line. And in this case, that's going to work better. So like if I was doing this in Procreate on my iPad, I might just rotate the whole iPad. But in this case, just do this. Yeah, that angle is definitely better for this line. Yeah. And then something that, you know, I'm sure I'm not alone in is I also find that like my confidence with uh, lines like this kind of comes over the course of the drawing, like it kind of work up to it a little bit as it goes. Whoops. Sometimes they go crazy. Sometimes they go crazy. Sometimes they still go crazy. <laughs> Yeah, not happy with any of these. Yep, not happy with any of these. Uh, okay, better. <laughs> better. But yeah, so I literally like building up to feeling good about the shape of that. But uh, there is the brim. And so now I can kind of come back to center um all right so i'll end up doing the back piece uh to that a little bit down the road and now actually seeing this like this i want to clean this up a little bit as well get the shape right there we go better definitely better all right um i think i'll do look at this again yeah, I may do the next, you know, there's, you know, one thing I always say to myself and to other artists that I collaborate with sometimes, you're never going to regret having too many layers. <laughs> you're only going to regret not having enough. Um, at least that has certainly been my experience. Um, so you see, I, I kind of made my own interpretation of what these kind of wings things at the top are for the helmet. So I've got them, you know, kind of wrapping around and being this kind of a thing not right now sweetie all right it's nice to be loved though i'll tell you he's a great kid um all right and we're gonna do the same thing oops don't like that like that. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to get these uh, kind of design, I don't know what to call these, kind of like shuriken uh, icon on there, which you can see kind of roughed in. All right. And then we're going to put the back part of the helmet in the back here. And let's see, I want to make sure that this actually connects. Don't like that line. Wow, yeah, I'm not feeling the uh, precision that I try to get into this stuff here. Wow. <laughs> Getting lots of uh, Command Z, which is undo. Yeah, I'm just not feeling, so far, not feeling the level of precision here that I like to try to get to, but it's all right. You don't stop, you just keep going. And don't like that shape there either, so I'm going to trim that a little bit.
Okay, a little better. A little better. So we got some helmet. Um, we got that guy on the top. So let's get that in there. Or did I end up putting? Oh, I ended up putting that on the same thing. So is this blank? Yeah. All right. So it's all right. Got this on there, and this is blank, and this is blank. So we'll use this one for this. Nope. Nope. Better, but nope. <laughs> and okay. 17th time is the charm. Um, all right. So we're getting there with a little bit of it. Um, you know, sometimes actually go a little bit smaller too, which helps in some of these more precise lines, believe it or not. All right, so I'm kind of looking forward to this kind of gas mask kind of a uh, face that this guy has. And uh, it's one of the things I think is really interesting about this particular character, this particular Bushido. Um, so I'm going to might take a couple tries to find exactly what I want it to be, but I think it's going to be really cool uh, as we get into it. Um, so that's the back of the helmet. We'll now do this layer, which is empty. Let me save. Always, always, always be saving. Very much learned from regret <laughs> uh, when not saving. Um, all right, so uh, gonna start with this kind of front part, and this one probably will take a couple tries as it's essentially a circle. And one of the nice things about working with vectors is that you can get those kind of perfect circles where. Uh, freehand is a little harder to do that just as much. Uh, that is a nice feature that Procreate has is being able to have it kind of, uh, I think I call it shape assist, where it will help you find some of those shapes. All right, so this line work just may not be as clean as I initially hoped that it would be. Gonna just have to live with that, this guy. And trying to get this outer ring. This feels a little bit better so far. All right. I'm okay with that. And then we've got these kind of breathing holes, perhaps. And gonna give them a little shadow. More will come in the color, of course. Um, all right, so okay with that. I may get another layer. Part of what I'm looking at is what I might want to affect as individual layers. Uh, when it comes to color. Um, so if I might want to be able to change something about it uh, in the color phase, then um, I will sometimes, well, often keep it on a separate layer. And again, don't think you can really have too many layers. All right. There is this piece of the helmet. I like how it and it just goes into black. We're going to try to keep that essentially. Oops. I had it and I messed it up. Um, all right. And then you can see, like, I'm trying to give this a little dimension around here. So think about what my light source is here. Um, 
think we'll do you have a little bit of light from the flame if i do that so we'll get a little bit of light from the top but i'm not going to be as concerned with that at the moment as like coming from let's say the left in this case i think we'll do light from this side so uh, in that case that will help me figure out how i want to treat the the dark parts of this and i am kind of extrapolating what the shape of this mask might be in a bit of perspective um, as it comes around and creates this shape here um, as if the ventilator part is closer to us Ugh, this is just one of those times where the lines are not doing what i want them to um, but as if that's a little closer to us than the rest. So if light's coming from this way, I'm going to start to put in some blacks here. And this is where a little thick to thin comes in, or thin to thick. Thin lines to thick lines is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Really getting to see what uh, I would call sometimes like it just like I can get there. I'm always able to get there, but it's not always what I want it to be. As far as the feeling of everything just kind of coming out of the pen, it's more of a struggle sometimes. Um, yeah, I'm not loving that either. Yeah. End up keeping this pretty, not a ton of feathering and doing it more yeah. in the color side because I think, uh, yeah, it's what's going to have to happen. No, <laughs> just no. Man, seriously. So I think, you know, if you go back and watch that nuclear nerd video, uh, just about everything was working. <laughs> this one is definitely more of a struggle, but still like it. How it's going to come out is going to be cool. All right. Um, so this part of the mask has a cool, like the way that Jeremy designed this, it has a pretty cool sort of unique shape to it, which I also want to capture here. Of course, you know, if my drawing ability was actually on point at the moment it would be easier but again we're going to just like work through it and uh let's see this is more about the overall shape like this Mine is not doing me any favors, and actually this uh, eraser is too big for me now. Uh, eraser size going smaller here. That's going to be helpful. Yeah. All right. Okay. How do you feel about this? Mm, it's still like, it's not quite right. Thought the sketch was working really well, but a little bit not quite what I want it to be yet. 
Gonna get there. Yeah, definitely gonna have to let the color work do a lot of the heavy lifting here. All right, and then I've kind of just got these guys blocked out as far as where they need to go. Okay. All right, yeah, you're going to see some probably from the time I stop <laughs> streaming today to uh, when I resume this, you're going to see some cleanup. But I am not going to stop just yet. Can't stop, won't stop, you know. But yeah, it's messier than I want it to be for sure. All right. Um, mm -hmm, still streaming. Still streaming live. <laughs> Okay, and let's see. I think the thing with the eyes, which will be good, is put them on a separate layer. Put them on a separate layer. And I'm gonna do something a little different with that. All right, it's starting to come together. You can kind of see it. It's starting to be able to see it. All right, that's the mask. We're gonna keep that on a separate layer. That's going to stay on a separate layer. We're going to do the eyes on a separate layer. And for this, I can, because it's going to be black, I can just create this shape like this. Get those cutouts. Um, all right. And then without, hopefully, covering any of the lines that I do like. We can come in here and just get this area. And then should be able to get just a nice easy fill to get this black the rest of the way in there. Let's see. All right. Where is my fill? Yep. And you can see that edge. That's just because that's on. Oh, we got this part here. All right, but that looks pretty good. Helps to get the eyes in there. This side, maybe a little too big. All right, that's feeling pretty good for that part. All right, so that's most of what I've got from the original character. I'll need to do the shuriken designs on the uh, kind of helmet wings. <laughs> and uh, got some detail in the back of the helmet with the stripes, which I'll have to figure out how I want to deal with. Um, but mostly the rest of it is my own invention, kind of adding to the look of this character. Um, so... Uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, Lady Valor, checking chat. Thanks for uh, tuning in for this little bit of a uh, train wreck. Although I do now kind of like the way that it's coming out. So uh, it gets there. It gets there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little light on the blacks and let uh, a lot of this happen in the color stage. Uh, where's that mask layer? I want to just take this one yeah and just give this a little bit why is that not working 
not erasing. Let's see. What's not happening here? Turn this off. What layer? That one. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. That's why. No, that's not why. I'm still drawing, not erasing. There we go. I'm going to give this a little bit of an edge there, which will come into play when the color comes in. Why is that doing that? confused by what's happening here is that where is that line aha okay let's get rid of that from there there we go yes what layer am i on sometimes that becomes an issue as well okay um all right so that is most of the helmet and I'm going to have to wrap up for the moment as this was a kind of spur of the moment um, stream tonight. But uh, let me try to get a little bit more in and maybe next time I'll be a little more sure footed, except it won't be footed sure handed, perhaps <laughs> uh, when it comes to this line work. Um, but I don't certainly don't hate where we're at at the moment. Um, so uh let's just work on a little bit of the body here and i've given him or her you don't know who's in these bushitos which is kind of what I, one of the things i like about them as characters anyone can be behind the mask um but i've given this bushido this kind of collar again man hate that line there we go And uh, gonna give this a bit of a texture under here, which will continue through here. So this guy or gal, again, as the case may be, uh, seems to like their protective gear. So we're leaning into that. And going with this kind of a collar that is uh, has this kind of piping around it. And it's got this kind of, I don't know if it's a zipper. It's not a zipper. Probably not a zipper. Probably not a zipper. Yeah. It's this kind of piping design that goes into the collar. Okay, some of this is feeling a little more confident to me, what I would want it to be perhaps, although I don't speak too soon. <laughs> And then he, I'm going to, I'm going to call him he, I, you know, forgive me for that. <laughs> this Bushido, again, could be any gender, but I'm calling him he in this case. So here's got this kind of, um, it's not, I don't know if this would be considered a gi, but uh, it's got this kind of deal going on on this side. And because we don't really see much of the below the shoulders here, 
I'm just gonna let this one be, uh, do not like that. Uh, let this one be more mysterious over here. We don't know what's going on with that shoulder other than it's a shoulder. Um, and then this other side, he's got a bit of a uh, kind of a shoulder pad. And I'm sure these things have proper names, which I'm just not giving them. Oh my God, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not giving them their due with their names. But um, yeah, again, we're just seeing a bit of it. So and yeah, kind of giving it a little bit of a design here, but without needing to see more of it, it doesn't have to be overly designed. No. Okay. And then this will have a bit of a thicker line because it's one of the things that's closest to us here. Um, and then let's give this kind of deal here. It's kind of like these overlapping folds of clothes and things like that when it's working really helps to create some depth in the design. Okay. Now you can see I'm using like some stripes here um, in the shoulder pads and also here in this part of his tunic or gi, um, which mirrors the stripes that are going to be in the helmet um, and so you know just kind of extrapolating what some of the design might be like uh, if we were to see the rest of the characters uh, full body but we're not at the moment Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm feeling a little better about some of this stuff, but TBD. Um, yeah. All right. And then I guess, you know, I'll give this kind of a similar treatment over here. I was going to do this kind of um, cross thing over here, but now looking at it, I don't know that that actually feels consistent with the rest of the design. So I'm going to leave that blank for the moment, I'll probably do something in the color stage with that. So that is most of the body. We've got the back of the helmet now to do, which I'm going to do on the back layer. Uh, this is another good opportunity to turn the canvas. And voila. Okay, feeling a little, again, don't want to jinx myself, but feeling a little more confident about some of these lines. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Longer warm up today. Um, all right, save. Save, save, save. <laughs> Um, this is going to be mostly black back here, which is also a good reason not to do a lot more black on the mask at this point, to do that more in color. Um, and then I do want to give him this sword in back, so we'll put that on a separate layer as well, all the way at the back. And again, a good one to probably rotate the canvas on so that the line is a little straighter. Uh, for my 
arm. No. <laughs> this is another thing that actually, does this do it? Doesn't do it. So Procreate has a another mode which you can make nice, clean, straight lines with when you hold uh, on a line that you're drawing freehand, it will create a nice straight line. But Clip Studio not does not do that, but has other great features as well. All right. And so I've given, well, let's come in here. I've given this sword, this kind of scalloped, Built idea. And here for it. You can see where that connects in there. And we won't see that part, but this is going to be in here. This doesn't, you know, if I probably should actually go reference one of the actual Daitos, but in this case, I am not. This will be a, maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's just the, the in story terms, it's just not one of the ones that came through the portals. This is just a good old fashioned Bushido's sword. For anyone that doesn't know, again, this is a character that was put up, quote unquote, staked in the Macroverse Discord. And from time to time, myself or other artists, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, will pick those, some of those characters to create a one of one interpretation of. Um, and then we will mint it and deliver it to the person that put it up in the Macroverse Discord. No charge in that particular case, just a thank you for being a part of the community and a part of what we're building. Um, also, by putting your characters up, they may ultimately end up getting short stories produced about them in comics format for our comics app, uh, or may find their way into other media as those opportunities arise. Um, so lots of things that could happen if you put your characters up uh, in the Macroverse Discord, if you stake them. Um, you know, we certainly might have a little bit of preference, preferential treatment for our own uh, characters and collections. So Dead Town, Bushido's, GSA, a couple more that will be announced soon, um, you know, and so forth. More, actually, a lot more that will be coming soon. Uh, but we're also taking cool characters from any collection because who knows when someone's going to want to, uh, you know, see something and be inspired by it and create a piece of art around it. Um, so that's probably about as far as I'm going to get tonight. The one other thing I will do is just get the those shuriken designs um, in the helmet uh, in place. Um, so they're going to go on their own layer as well because they're probably gonna again get some sort of color treatment to them what i might do since we've got this green background is just actually go ahead and do them in white and i've kind of just made a little bit of a diagram for myself uh, to be able to draw them in um, and then i might do this a way where i actually do just the shape and then kind of cut away the part that I'm not going to use. That might be the easiest way to do this. So basically it's these triangle as opposed to trying to draw all the intricacies of it. Um, so we'll fill, might as well do the other one too. Ooh, yeah, yeah. No, no. So we'll kind of get this shape in here and then fill it. 
I said fill it. Why is that not working? Oh, that's an eraser. <laughs> fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it. And then uh, actually I'm going to move this all the way down under the... Hmm, why is that? Oh, I know why. Okay, we're just going to put this all the way on its own spot for the moment because I want to be able to see the, the line drawing over the top of it. Now we'll go to the eraser. And then can kind of clean this up a little bit on the edges. And then we'll find that center hole and carve out the pieces that don't belong. Yeah, way easier to do it this way than to try to draw the actual shape. There we go. And then on this side, the center part. Get it around in here. And around in here. And there we go. Pretty much it. And then we can take that and put it back in there. So now if I turn off this and I turn off this, it's a pretty good foundation to work with now. So despite a little bit of struggle, some progress. Um, so that's where we're going to call it for tonight. Thank you, anyone that uh, tuned in for this particular stream. Um, again, uh, last time I'll say it, but uh, you too could have this happen to one of your characters or PFPs. Uh, just bring them to the Macroverse Discord, which is Macroverse. Sorry, it's not. It's discord.gg slash Macroverse. Um, and if you're curious about what we're doing with Bushido's and Dead Town and Hex 11 and Darkland and Remind and many, many other titles, uh, we will be launching our collectible digital comics platform sometime over the next couple of months. Um, we're deep in the weeds in final testing with our dev team. So when I'm not doing something like this, I'm largely testing and giving feedback to the dev team. Um, and in the meantime, there's lots of fun and exciting storytelling stuff that we're also engaged in at the moment. Uh, so if you have any interest in storytelling, world building, franchise development, uh, character creation, making your own content, seeing how content is made, or any other part of building entertainment, uh, we're a good place to come hang out. So again, discord.gg slash microverse. You can follow me at Ebonverse on Twitter. You can see more about Bushido's uh, both at macroverse.com and also on Twitter at Bushido's NFT. Um, lots more that uh, you can engage with and plug in with. Um, you know, connect with me. I'm happy to chat with just about anyone, anywhere. Lots of fun stuff going on. And uh, with that, um, I will sign off for the evening and there will be more to come. Thank you so much. Good night. And here we go.